Hello everyone! For today's tutorial, I'm going to walk you guys through how to paint a pet portrait using rainbow watercolors. This is a little bit different than my regular tutorials in that I'm going to break it up into three separate videos just because my pet portraits do take a little bit longer to complete and you'll want to allow for drawing time between them regardless. So for today, we're going to be painting my adorable dog named Luna and I'm going to show you how to get down the first layer of paint. So whenever I start a painting like this, I always like to get a layer over the entire piece, but I like to prioritize the eyes and nose first just because they're my favorite and they really bring the painting to life. So whenever I'm painting a nose, I like to fill it in with water first. It just helps bring all of the colors together. My favorite colors to use for a black nose are Prussian blue, the pur dark purple, as well as a little bit of pink. And sometimes for the lighter parts, I will use yellow, but in the case of Luna's nose, it's quite dark. So I'm going to stick to darker colors. So I like to come in with the Prussian blue and sort of outline the top and around the nostrils and all of the main areas of the nose. And it will naturally go to where the water is. So you don't need to push it around too much. Just let it kind of bleed. There's no right and wrong here. You really can put the color wherever you like. I'm using the brush to move the paint around a little bit, but I'm also just allowing time to fill it in. Once I've got paint everywhere, I'm going to lift out some of the lighter spots just because I want them to show up as a little bit of a highlight. So I'm taking a clean, dry brush and lifting out a little bit of that paint. So once I am done the nose, I move on to the eyes. And for the eyes, I do the same thing. I fill them in with water first. And then I like to drop in a little bit of yellow ochre to start, even though the yellow gets covered up with other colors because Luna's eyes are pretty much black. I do find taking the time to add in um, base layers just adds a bit more dimension to the eyes. And sometimes I will show them as a tiny bit lighter than the reference photo just because I know that um, reference photos can sometimes appear a little bit dark, especially with dark dogs. So once I have the yellow ochre everywhere, I come in with some raw umber and I'm just laying it in near where the pupils are initially. So I'm being conscious of leaving the whites of the eyes white. I find that when you're dealing with the white of the page, you're always gonna have a brighter appearance um, then coming in with white paint afterwards. And I apologize if you can hear my dog prancing around in the background. She is wanting to be on my lap during recording, so I think I might have to oblige. All right, so it's time to move on. I'm going to work on the ears next. So I start by laying down some clear water again. I always like to make sure I have nice clean water because these washes, it's so important not to have color on your brush. So I fill in the majority of the areas and it's not important that it's perfect. If you have white areas showing, you'll figure that out shortly. So next I come in with Prussian blue and I'm going in the darkest spot first so that it naturally bleeds outward. And I'm moving my brush around the page using the striking motion to allow for the hairs. So I'm always using the motion that um, of the hair. I don't know how to describe it any other way, but I'm basically doing the swiping motion so that any time the paintbrush goes onto dry spots on the page, it still has that hair-like texture. So now because the ear gets lighter towards the outside, I'm taking some teal and putting that into the water. And you'll notice it bleeds into the Prussian blue and we really want that to happen. Yeah. 
If you find that your page is drying up quite a bit, you may need to add a bit more water. So here I am going to do the yellow and you want to be careful not to allow it to bleed into the blue too much just because it will muddy the color. So I'm doing yellow just around the outer edge and I will blend it in. And by blend it in, I mean have a color that kind of tapers in between the teal and the yellow. So I'm making my way down and then I'm going to take a little bit of pink and come in between the two. Just because I find that when pink blends with teal, I don't mind it as much, but I don't love when yellow blends with teal. I don't know what it is. It could be just personal preference. So I do find that I have a bit too much color, so I'm going to lift a little bit of it out using a clean dry brush. Whenever you add down a color that you don't like, you're going to have a lot more control removing it with a clean dry brush. So next I'm going to do some of the shadow areas. So I know that Luna's part is often a little bit darker. Even though you can't see it in the photo, I like to exaggerate that spot a little bit by adding some color there. Now what color you choose is totally dependent on you. My favorite color is teal and Prussian blue, so you're going to see a lot of that show up in my paintings. I'm going to be bouncing around a little bit, but um, basically I'm following all the lighter shadows. So I'm going to lose, use a little bit of lime green here. With all the white parts, I do like to use more of the blues, like faded blues, yellows, lime greens. I sort of do have a bit of a pattern in my mind that I follow. And to me, white appears as more blue, just like black appears as more blue and purples. So now I'm going to do her muzzle and I'll start by filling in with water in the darkest area first. And this area is definitely going to have to get two passes. There's just no way around it, but I like to start by adding in a little bit of color to get it started. Every time I am going to get new water, I am cleaning my brush and you'll notice that my water is getting a little bit less clean, but I don't even mind in this instance just because um, I'm wanting to use a lot of uh, very light shades for this area. So it's okay if it already has a bit of a light shade in the water. So I'm using the swiping motion again to create that background. Later when we come over top, we'll add more individual strands. But for this, it's okay to just have one or two and have the rest bleed into the water. I'm adding an assortment of colors. And whenever I add a color like, say, green on one side, I try and balance it out with a little bit of green somewhere else in the painting. It's pretty rare that you'll see one color show up and in one spot and nowhere else in a painting. So using my finer brush, I'm gonna come in and go around the mouth. The finer brush gives me a tiny bit more control. It's certainly not necessary. You can use the tip of your brush. Um, but in this case, I just like to use the very fine point on my dagger brush. So I'm re-darkening around the muzzle here. As the water um, takes on the paint, it light it lightens as it dries and it also lightens as it makes its way outward. So I'm using my brush to lift out the color, but I find that it's not lifting out enough. So I'm actually gonna use a paper towel and lift it out completely because she does have a little pink spot there. And I don't need it to necessarily be pink, but I just need it to be lighter than the rest of her muzzle. So whenever you're lifting out color like that and wanting to come back in, you're gonna need to make sure you really lift it out. Um, if there's any wetness left on the page, it'll just bleed right back in. With watercolors, there isn't always control over um, going back on mistakes you've made. But I do find that if it's still wet, it's pretty workable and you can erase small mistakes with paper towel. Um, that being said, it's rare to be able to get all the color off the page. I always find that if I make a mistake, I like to work it into the painting. 
So right now I am adding a bit more detail. Now I'm not being too careful with my detail at this point, just because it's more important that we just get the overall shape. Um, but I am adding a few just because it's nice to have layers of detail. So I'm coming in now on the mouth just to add in the darker spots. I find where her mouth meets the sides of her little beard, it's a little bit darker, so I'm okay with the top part bleeding in. So I'm finishing off the beard now. I'm just adding in a little bit of variation of color. I don't like to have it all purple. So I'm swiping in a little bit of pink, but I find that it's going a tiny bit dark, so I'm just going to lift out a bit of that color. We don't wanna to go too dark on the first coat. It's nice to have a more layered approach. So I'm gonna work on the ear next. I'm gonna follow the same sort of formula as the other ear. I'm just adding lots of water first, making sure that I have a nice thin layer throughout the whole ear. And it's okay if some of it bleeds into the ear. I'm not gonna worry about it too much. I can lift out and create a bit of a border so that it doesn't actually bleed back into the mouth when I start adding the dark color. Anytime you have water touching, you have to be very mindful of it bleeding into each other. You don't wanna create a painting that's sort of all one value. And that can easily happen if you lay down too much water. So on this side, I'm doing the Prussian blue again. I'm adding a little bit of purple. I'm just kind of playing around with colors and trying to create that gradient going from dark underneath her chin to lighter on the outside. But in this case, I don't want to follow it exactly, so I'm going to use a bit of lime green instead of pink and yellow on the outside. The idea being that I'm just trying to capture that the outside of her ear is lighter than the inside. So now I'm making my way over to where she has a little bit of a darker fur on the outside of her head. And I'm doing that by using my dagger brush to lay down water first. I'm going to then come in with a little bit of teal and place that down around her eyes. Now it's easier to lay down the lighter color first versus going in with the eyes first, just because then I don't have to be mindful of how far in I make those shadows on the head later on. I can always go darker over top, but it's harder to go lighter side by side. So I'm just gonna create balance by going on both sides. I'm using a bit of the cerulean blue. It's a bit of a different shade of blue. It's, it's brighter than Prussian blue and I, I really like it. So now that I've got almost all that done and I've got to wait for it to dry before I can move on to the eyes. So I'm gonna come in and do the bottom part where her neck is. She has quite a bit of pink in there and um, I wanna capture that by just adding down some water first and then just light amounts of pink. She recently got a very short haircut because it is getting extremely mucky here in Canada and spring always brings a ton of sand and grit on the streets. So I shave her off probably a little bit sooner than I should just because I can't bath her the three times a day that she gets walked. It's easier just to keep her hair short. So I'm moving in here with some yellow I wanna have that yellow show up in a few more places, so I'm going to make my way around. I decided to add a drip here. I like to control the drip by telling it where to go. I used to just hold the canvas up, but sometimes it would go a little too crazy or drip somewhere that I didn't want it to, so now sometimes I just use my brush to lead it downward. So while I'm thinking of it, I'm gonna do a bit more on the chin. I want yellow to appear in a lot of spaces, so I'm coming in with yellow on the chin. It's a nice bright color and it implies that her chin is quite brighter in the middle. I also just, when I look at the reference photo, I can almost see yellow in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and lean into that and add yellow there. Whenever I see tones and certain colors in the reference photo, I basically just brighten the colors I'm already seeing.
When I have yellow on my brush, I like to just go in and do some of the other spots that I want to be yellow. I'm gonna add in a bit of orange as well. Sometimes I notice myself leaning too much into the blue and purple, so I kind of rein that in by going and adding a little bit of the warmer colors. So I'm being mindful not to touch the blue of the ear. It would have probably been easier to lay this down first, but I didn't, so in this case, I'm just being more cautious. And in the case of Luna, she's not very dark on her body, so it's not important that I have like a full layer of watercolor on her body. It's okay to just have dabs here and there of color. If you have a dog that's quite dark in the body, then you're gonna wanna add a bit more color in advance. So once again, I'm just always using that swiping motion so that we're getting that, imp we're implying that the hair is there without drawing every single hair. I don't like to have that level of detail, especially not on the first coat. So now we're going in and we're gonna paint the eyes. So I'm gonna lay down water throughout the whole space that's currently white. It just allows me to create a natural gradient from where it goes darker to where it goes lighter on the outside. So I'm gonna start by adding in a very dark blue. In my case, it's the Prussian blue. And I'm only gonna lay it down right around the eyes initially. Because I've put water everywhere, it's naturally going to follow the water. Now I'm grabbing a little bit of purple, which at this point is looking very similar to the blue. I'm laying that down as well. So I'm just making sure to leave a space around the eyes because I'm going to come in once that's dry and outline the eyes a little bit more. Now I'm doing the other eye and I'm gonna follow the same pattern. So clear water first, or in this case, clear-ish water first. I haven't changed my water yet. I usually do it about three times during a painting. So same thing, I'm coming in with a very saturated Prussian blue and outlining the eyes. And we're gonna be going over all of this again on the next coat. So if it dries quite a bit lighter, just leave that alone. Try not to, I've tried to resist the urge to go too dark on that first coat. You won't get that dimension that you get of having multiple coats of paint. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit subscribe and hit that uh, notification bell so that you are notified as soon as I release my next video where I will walk you through how to paint the next coat on Luna. Have a great day.